All right, welcome back to the Brad and Kyle channel. Today, we have special guest, Coach Daniel Puerto. You guys don't get to see him in the YouTube videos. Not that special. We, see, okay, him, we see him all the time. Uh, our coach in the Brad and Kyle coaching membership. And today, we're going to take the complicated system that is the layout and try to simplify it for the average consumer so you guys can understand why is the pin here? Why is the layout like this? Hopefully, it'll give you some an idea on how your ball is reacting. So we start with the pat, positive axis point. Every bowler has a positive axis point. You have your own, Brad has his own, Dennis, we don't know. That's jury's out. But the point is, every bowler rolls the ball differently. When you go to league, you can see that. Every one of your teammates rolls it a little different. That particular roll has a center point that the bowling ball rotates around. Well, that's your positive axis point. And that's the measurement of you, the bowler. That's what makes you unique. And that's how we in the pro shop can match how you throw the ball to the particular bowling ball that you're buying. Right. So, and there's a lot of videos out there that are, yeah. you can easily search on YouTube and go, okay, how do I find my PAP? How do I measure it? How do Thousands I get that? of videos. You can go to your pro shop. They can help you out with yeah. that. So, okay. We have the PAP. All right, Daniel. What does that mean when it comes to laying a ball out? Well, the bowling ball has, if it's asymmetrical, it has a pin, a center of gravity, and a mass bias or a PSA, um, preferred spin axis. That simply means that's the spot towards which the ball wants to roll. If it's a symmetrical bowling ball, then you only have two spots, the pin and the center of gravity. Now, due to some rule changes in August of 2020, the center of gravity no longer matters as much as it used to at one point because the center of gravity used to determine whether or not we'd put a balance hole in the ball. Right. A lot of people thought because visually you can see it, a lot of people thought that the center of gravity really meant something when it comes to the layout of the ball. It didn't, it just meant whether or not the ball would need a balance hole. Those days are gone, so let's not spend a lot of time on that. The point is, the VLS system from Storm has three measurements, three numbers. The pin to pap, the PSA to pap, and the pin to the vertical axis line. And just to let you guys know, this is going to be information for me, too, because I don't know how to do the video. At the system. beginning of the video, Kyle said, just tell me like if I was a student. <laughs> yeah, please, because don't ask for my opinion on this, because when I came to Storm, Storm uses the VLS system. I haven't really learned how to use it yet. I'm a little more of a pin up, pin down guy myself, but uh, we're going to try to get into the it. Three so the like three finger layout? Yeah, the, the fan just said, you do the three finger layout. You go, I want it like that. <laughs> so... so Let's talk about the three different numbers from VLS. Pin to PAP means the distance from the pin to the positive axis point. PSA to PAP means preferred spin axis, which is down here, to the positive axis point. And then the third number is the pin to VAL. So in order to measure your positive axis point, we need two coordinates, up and down and left and right. Right. right? The VAL is the vertical one. And, of course, the bigger number is the horizontal one. Now, how do we use those numbers to get the ball reaction specifically that you're looking for? It's actually pretty simple. The pin to pad being the most important distance. By a far, by a lot. Right. Right? That's the most important. So, pin to pad can be anywhere between zero inches to six and three quarter inches. But just like anything, the pin to pap distance at the extreme ends of that tends to be not very functional. So you're not going to see just about anybody drilling a high performance bowling ball with a pin one inch to pap. Right. Because that's going to make the bowling ball roll so early and quit on you, right? Like roll out, like we call it. Right. And if you drill a bowling ball with the pin very, very close to six and three quarter inches, you go to the other extreme. The bowling ball goes forever long and nobody wants a $275 bowling ball that goes 70 no, feet. No, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> so now we can narrow down that pin to pap distance. So I always recommend to all of my customers, don't even consider anything less than an inch and a half or anything past six inches. Yeah, I can, I can attest that. The, pretty much the only determination I use when 
figuring out how I'm going to lay out the ball is the pin the pad. That's my main focus. Right. And that's why I say when we do like, when I just look at a bowling ball, we've drilled so many bowling balls that I know the distance on my pin the paps when I can look at it. So when I see, okay, I want pin up and I want it a little higher, well, I know it's right there and I know it's right here. So I, sometimes we don't necessarily deal with like, oh, you got to have it five degrees different because it's right. so hard to translate that five degrees on the lanes and be like, okay, yeah, oh yeah, it clearly went longer down the lane. It's hard to do that. So we, pin to pap, I agree, probably the main determinant in the bowling ball layout system. Yep. And here's the other thing. If you're going to buy many bowling balls and you're going to lay them out differently, it wouldn't be advisable to drill one at four and a quarter inches and the next one at four and a half inches. That quarter of an inch difference from one ball to the other is just really not going to... It's, it's, it's yeah, so hard it's not gonna make to a difference. tell. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, yeah. You want to work your arsenal in terms of inches. So that's what I'd recommend. And most, most of us uh, regular human beings cannot get our hands on 75 bowling balls a year. <laughs> right. so, so you want to drill your bowling balls, you know, four inches, five inches, and be able to have, if you're going to have a symmetrical ball, for example, symmetrical, solid, sanded. Well, one at five inches and one at four inches is a good enough difference. You drill one at four and a half and one at four and three quarters, you're not yeah, going to be able to tell. When you, when you go to tournaments, the last thing you want is multiple, you know, especially because most people don't have 10 bowling balls in a tournament. Right. You don't want multiple bowling balls being so close in reaction that you're not going to be able to really tell a difference. Yep. Now, I love explaining it this way. So we talked about the six and three quarters total distance, right? We don't want to go close to zero. We don't want to go close to six and three quarters. I love explaining it this way. Uh, think of it like cars, like automobiles, right? Your engine in your car is designed to work the best possible at about 2,500 RPMs. If your RPMs in your car are 500, you're not really going anywhere. No. And if the your RPMs wheels. in your car are 7,000, you're about to blow the engine up. Yeah. yeah so it's the same thing there. with the whole pin to pap thing, right? Too close over here, bad reaction. Too close over there, bad reaction. Keep it somewhere in the middle. So three, four, five inches are great numbers to concentrate on. What do they mean? The distance from the pin to pap determines how soon the bowling ball will roll. That's it. So a three inch will roll sooner than a four inch, and a four inch will roll sooner than a five inch. Right. So for example, us in the pro shop, we watch you bowl. We determine that you throw the ball a little hard. Maybe we put it at three inches so that we can get, get, that it, ball to pick get up. it going. Yep. Uh, you throw the ball a little slow, maybe we go five inches to get you down the lane a little farther. Hopefully, do you think that explained pin to pap well? Yeah, no, it, and so there's a lot of videos out there on how to find your pap, and, and so I think now we should go into actually laying out a ball and where people can see that pin to pap and how we, there is that distance so they can visually see what that distance is and then they can maybe look at their own bone balls and see. Sure thing. So. The, I don't, this isn't really a video to teach you how to lay it out, so I'm sure this is going to be a little off camera. Yeah. But it's just to explain. So we're going to use a bowler with a three inch pin, uh, three inch pap and a bowler with five and a half inches. Beautiful. Quite different, right? Quite different. And we're going to use very simple numbers. VLS four by four by two. Beautiful. Four pin to pap, four PSA to pap, and two inches VAL to um, pin. So Perfect. we're doing four by four by two on both bowling balls, one bowler, five and a half inch pap, another bowler, three inch pap. So here we go. And, what, and what's gonna be really cool about this, and this is one of the main points of the video we wanted to get to you guys, is that we've seen so many people, and I've done it too, you know, you, you look at a guy throwing a bowling ball, maybe he's crushing it, whatever it is, and you go, man, I want that ball, and I wanna lay it out the same, and you see he has a pin over bridge, and you're like, okay, you go to your pro shop guy, and you go, I want mine pin over bridge. Cannot stress this enough, if you're watching this video, that just because he has his pin over bridge and you want yours pin over bridge, those are not more than likely not going to be the same layouts because you guys have a different pin or you have a different path. So hope this is going to show that we're going to put the same layout on both balls, but the path is going to be different, meaning that these are two different bowlers and show the same layout visually looks different. Correct. So this is the five and a half inch pap and the grip would end up there. Now, if we do the exact same thing on this bowling ball, and I'm going to draw a fake PSA because this ball doesn't have one. It is a uh, symmetrical bowling ball. So this is the 
three inch pap for because that's what this particular boulder has. So we just got done marking these bowling balls, drawing the lines on them. The layout is four by four by two. The layout on this bowling ball is four by four by two. The layout on this bowling ball is four by four by two. The pin is nowhere near in the same vicinity, right? Nowhere near. That's simply because it's a different bowler with a different pap. This bowler has a three inch pap. This bowler has a five and a half inch pap. So this layout and this layout, given the same conditions, same rotation, same speed and revolutions, the two bowlers will have the same ball reaction. Although, it looks totally different. Yeah, it looks totally different. You guys can see the fingers, the pins all the way out here in the right. Here, the fingers, the pins right above the bridge. So when you're going to say, hey, I want the same layout as this guy, it can look this different. But I think this is, this is something in the industry that people, I, for whatever reason, doesn't translate very well. So we have the pin the pap distances. Now, Daniel, exactly where, what is that? So that is this pin to this little cross right here, right? Or this little intersection. Correct. This distance from the pin to that spot is the same four inches on both bowling balls. Okay, and like we said, this is going to be the biggest determinant of the ball reaction when we're looking at the layout. By system, a lot. Is that, is that pin to pap distance. Okay, so but we have two more numbers that go into the VLS, VLS system. So what, what do, how do those impact the ball reaction? So the pin, the, sorry, the pap to PSA position is the same. It can be zero to six and three quarters. But the same thing happens. You don't want to go to zero and you don't want to go to six and three quarters because you're in the extremes now. So the more common numbers are about two and a half to four and a half inches, which is going to put that PSA in a very strong position. Why is that important? Well, asymmetrical bowling balls are usually the top of the line stuff. Right. They're expensive. You really don't want to take your expensive big hook ball and drill it to not hook. Yeah. That, that no, doesn't we make don't, a lot of sense. We don't want that. Right? Um, so that's why PSA positions are always going to be between two and a half and four and a half inches because it's dead smack in the middle of the potential zero to six and three quarters. And then the other distance is the pin to vertical axis line. The closer you get the pin to that vertical measurement of the pap, the faster the bowling ball is going to want to spin up. You're making that break point sharper. The farther away from it, you're making that break point less sharp. So not too difficult to understand either. Same methodology goes there. You don't want to go to zero and you don't want to go to five. Right. Right. Keep it nice and even about two to three inches and that's good. And if you let me, I'm going to leave you with one more tip when it comes to bowling balls. Remember what I said about automobiles? I love comparing them. You wouldn't use a truck to go race and you, you, don't use a, you wouldn't use a Corvette to pull your boat. Right. Yeah, it's true. So it's more important that you pick the right product than to worry for what you want, for what you're looking for, than to worry too much about the layout. The layout can be simplified that way. If you're picking a bowling ball for heavy oil conditions, make sure it's solid, make sure it's asymmetrical, make sure it has a little bit of surface to it. If you're looking for bowling balls for a very short pattern, uh, like a urethane ball, then that's the right ball for the occasion. That'll be so much simpler on everybody to just pick the right ball and concentrate on that more than like, how many layouts do you use? Not many. I probably use a variation of two and it's a, it's pin up, pap, pin to pap right around this level and pin down somewhere right in this region. So that, and that's where I've translated the game to you because for me, sometimes it's hard to quantify the exact numbers of a layout system to the reaction that I'm getting. You know, I, the difference between the, the pin to pap being four and three quarters and four and a half. I can't visually tell that a whole lot. So, so we talked about the layout. There's a lot of factors that go into the, the, the bowling ball reaction. You know, the bowling ball is a big one and how you throw it, how you physically manipulate the ball is going to be a big determinant. Okay, so the last thing I think we should leave them with is that, you know, I think it's a lot for the average consumer to learn like a VLS system or do angles or something. Correct. It's, it's hard to know that. Okay, how can we give them tips to simplify? And obviously knowing this pin to pap is a big thing deal. So if you can know that, at least I think it is, because you need to know how far that pin is. You, your, ball, your ball driller may be giving you six inch pin to paps and you don't know it. Correct. So that happens. I, I've seen it. So I think learning that pin to pap is really important, but how can the average consumer just get a general idea? Okay, if I put the layout like this, this is what it's going to get. Or if I put the layout like this, this is what's going to happen. 
I would just concentrate on two layouts. I mean, you're a professional bowler and you do it. You concentrate on two layouts. And when I'm coaching, I'm always saying this all the time. If the pros don't do it, you don't do it. If the pros do it, go do what the pros do. Uh, we talked to Brad earlier, and he also said two to three layouts. So just concentrate on that. Know that a shorter pin distance to PAP is earlier rolling, earlier revving, and a longer distance is a little bit longer down the lane. So shorter, short, longer, long. And Makes sense to me. Yeah, just I like it, those terms right there. You, we can understand that. <laughs> yeah. um, so keep it real simple. Uh, don't overcomplicate your ball choices by complicating the layouts. That's what I would say. Well, Coach, I appreciate your breaking down. I think I learned a little bit about layout tier two today. It's a complicated system. It's hard for the average consumer. It is. I hope, I hope you guys took something out of that. If you guys want to learn more from this guy right here, because he's always teaching us something, go into the description, click the link, bradandkyle.com. It'll send you to our coaching membership. We're always running it's deals. Awesome. It is. This guy does it's an amazing awesome. job. It's per fun. Personal analysis, a community that you can talk to 24-7. We have a ton of just membership-related videos just for our members. It, it's a great time. So this guy is awesome. I appreciate you guys watching the video. I hope that answered some questions. It probably raised more. If you have more, throw them in the comments, <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time.